I love that old quote. I know you guys heard this before. It says, sin costs you more than you wanted to pay. It takes you farther than you wanted to go and keeps you longer than you wanted to stay. That's what sin does. It not only took him down, but again, it affected his best friend. It affected the body. I'm sure it affected other Calvary chapels because it was a stain now on a man of God. And the devil was rejoicing and the demons were rejoicing. And again, there was a time within our church that we didn't know what was going to take place. I didn't know if people were just going to leave and stop coming altogether. Had the devil won? And that was the question. But thanks be to God, as I, can, as I told your pastor this morning, uh, God's doing something good. You know, the devil did not win. As people did not keep their eyes on a man, but kept their eyes on Jesus, man. The Lord has, has continued to prosper and bless his church, because it's his church anyways, right? We're just servants. It's his church anyways. I want to talk about being a casualty this morning. And we all know what that means, being a casualty of war. Because that's something that can happen to each and every one of us if we are not careful. The Bible or the dictionary defines a casualty as someone who is injured, right? Not necessarily someone who died, but someone who is injured. But the saddest thing about casualty is the word casualty is related to the word casually. And we know what it means to be casual, right? It means that you are relaxed, right? We wear casual clothes. Those are relaxed clothes. And it's sad because that tells us something, that if we are not careful and we become too relaxed, we can be a casualty. We can be a casualty. Again, so often it's easy. We start to, you know, the Lord saves us. The Lord begins to change us. And then because that's so, we start to get a little lazy. We don't press in as we once did when we first were fired up for Jesus. At one time, we wouldn't miss church if our life depended on it. But now, because we got it all figured out, now because the Lord's cleaned us up and he's delivered us from some of our bad habits, now we think, it doesn't matter if I don't go here or there. It doesn't matter if I prayed as much as I once did. It doesn't matter if I read my Bible every day. But that's a lie, guys. It's a lie from the pit of hell. And this, for this reason, again, we need to be careful. We need to guard ourselves. We need to watch ourselves from growing casual from becoming too relaxed, from becoming too, again, just loosey-goosey because there will be consequences. And again, just like my pastor, there will be consequences. The truth is, we are in a war zone, right? Paul talks about spiritual warfare. And what I need to remind people, and even myself, all the time as I talk to my own men in our church, is that the devil has us in his crosshairs. He's got us in his crosshairs. And you know what? Even though we are Christians, even though we are under the blood, even though we are forgiven and our names are written in the book of life, you guys understand that while we are on planet Earth, we are living in enemy territory. Enemy territory. And so we need to be constantly aware. Think about guys who find themselves in enemy territory. Do they take it easy? Do they relax? Or do they need to be on their guard up early, right? Taking care of business making sure they are, on, they are prepared, they are, they are ready, because we don't know what the devil has next. If you're here, and again, this is just out of love, but I shared the same thing with my men, and you feel yourself getting casual, I want you to picture a soldier who has just got released from boot camp. He's, been, he's fit, he's ready, he's prepared, he's trained, and they send him home for a, a month. And as he goes home for a month, he begins to eat Krispy Kremes, right? He begins to you know, eat too many tacos, and he stops waking up early. He starts doing his exercises. He starts to get lazy. What happens if when he puts on 20 pounds, that next day he gets a phone call that they're shipping him off to Vietnam? He's not ready. He's not ready. Yes, he trained. Yes, he learned. Yes, he was prepared. But That was yesterday. He's not ready today. And for that reason, he might become a casualty. So I want to encourage you guys. Again, we're going to get into our text. I think there's three important things the Apostle Paul talks about to help us prepare, to help us guard from becoming a casualty. So turn your Bibles to Ephesians chapter 6. Let's look at three things that the Apostle Paul will talk us about, talk about that we need to know and that we need to do 
to keep us from becoming casualties. And it's a very popular text. I love this text. Let me share this text this morning. He says, Ephesians 6.10, Finally, my brothers, right, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Now, I love this because you have to understand the Apostle Paul being the pastor or at least the lead pastor of the church in Ephesus, okay? The Apostle Paul doesn't know if he's going to see this church again. He found this church, or he was the founder of this church, but now he doesn't know if he's going to see them again. And for that reason, he charges them, he commands them, and I love this. You have to see these as words coming from a pastor to his congregation, but you also need to see this as a commanding officer, commanding his soldiers to pay attention, to listen up. Because again, he knew, Paul knew that a battle that we were all in. And he says, my brethren, okay, everybody, my brothers, I believe sisters is indicated here. I believe this can apply to women as well. But he says, my fellow brethren, my congregation, those in the Lord, fellow believers, all of you guys. He doesn't say, hey, pastors, or he doesn't say, hey, leaders, because this applies to all of us. You might not be in any ministry here. I don't know. But it's, this still applies to you. How many of you know that during wartime, anybody who can pick up a gun is called the fight? You guys with me? It's the same thing. We're in a war today. We're in a spiritual battle today. And if you don't pay attention to the news, I mean, you know, you need to, and to see what is taking place. We're in a war, and things are getting worse. And for that reason, everybody who's anybody, if you are a believer here, if you are part of the brethren, you need to fight. You need to stand. You need to do what God has called you to do. And he says, finding my brethren, be strong. What is he saying? He says, don't fear. Don't faint. Things are going to get hard. You're going to go through trials. The enemy is going to try to do what he can to discourage you. But don't give up. Be strong, right? Put your pants on. Tighten that belt. Don't fall away. Be strong. Stick it out. Hang in there. What's the old saying? When the going gets tough, the tough what? They get going. That's what he's saying. Let's get going, guys. Don't start getting lazy on me. Don't start being flaky on me. Stand up. Let's go. 1 Corinthians 16, 13, Paul tells the Corinthian church, I love this. He says, be watchful, stand firm in the faith, and act like men. Act like men. That's a beautiful scripture. We need to act like men, not kids. He doesn't say act like boys. He says, act like men. Now look back, because this is so important. He says, finally, my brethren, be strong. He doesn't say, go out there and start lifting weights. That's not what he says. But he says, be strong in what? Look at your text. Be strong in the Lord. In the Lord. In the Lord's things. In God's word. Be strong in prayer. Be strong in your faithfulness to the Lord. Be strong in these things. This is what counts, right? Paul says in Philippians 13, I can do all things through Christ. That's where my strength comes from. It comes from the Lord. It's not me. It's not in my own power. But it's relying on the Lord every single day. We need to remember. We need to remind ourselves, right? We don't battle against flesh and blood. Our fight is against a spiritual enemy. And if we think that we can take on the devil ourselves, we're kidding ourselves. Seriously. He's been around thousands of years, guys. He's seen many people just like us, many men just like us. And for that reason, we're not called to fight him directly. Zechariah 4.6, not by might, nor by power, but by God's Spirit. We let God fight the battle for us. It's through the power of the Holy Spirit that we are able to overcome. Look at verse 11. He says, put on, put on. The whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the schemes of the devil. Now this idea of put on symbolizes a continual putting on. Every single day we are to put on permanence, right? For life. Every single day we put this on. An armor, the lifelong Christian Attire. You guys remember the old, uh, the old slogan for American Express, right? You never leave what? Home without it, right? This is the same exact thing. 
Before we leave the house, we spend time with God. We ask him to fill us with his Holy Spirit, to arm us with the armor of God, because we don't know what's out there. Think about it. While we were sleeping, the devil wasn't. And he was planning his attacks. We don't know what's going to wait for us when we walk out that door. We have no idea. We don't know the phone calls that we're going to get. We don't know. But what we do know is we need to be prepared. And this is how we prepare ourselves. This was Paul's instructions, right? We need to be prepared. This is our responsibility. And I think many Christians fail right here. We think our Bible knowledge, we think our, our history, our years of being a Christian is enough. But we need to do this every day, guys. This is our responsibility. And if we fail to pray, if we fail to involve the Lord in our day, if we fail to ask for his protection and his mercy and his covering, that's our fault. It's not God's. We need to be prepared. We need to, again, continue every single day. I think it's so important to rely on God and not rely on our own flesh. Because we'll be defeated, guys. We will be taken out every single day. And I, I, I preach this over the pulpit so much. Involve God's Spirit. God has given us His Holy Spirit for a reason. And we need to continually ask Him, Lord, baptize me this morning. Fill me with Your Holy Spirit. I don't want to try to do anything, right? On my own. The Bible says, apart from Him, we can do nothing anyways. So we need God's Spirit. We need to continually involve Him in our lives and not forget to do so. We need him. He is the one that will enable us to have the victory. And if we neglect to involve God, then once again, this is our fault, guys. This is our fault 100% of the time. Now, Paul talks about this armor in Romans 13, 11. He says this. He says, besides this, you know the time that the hour has come for you to wake from your sleep. For salvation is nearer to us now than when we first believed. The night is far gone, the day is at hand. So then let us cast off the works of darkness and put on the armor of light. And I love that picture. Paul says, get rid of the old man. Get rid of the old ways. And what? Put on the armor of light. Put on that life of righteousness, right? Put on that armor, which is God's pieces that he has given us for our protection. He says in verse 13, let us walk properly. Let us live right as in the daytime, not in orgies or drunkenness, not in sexual immorality or sensuality, not in quarreling and jealousy, but put on the Lord Jesus Christ and make no provision for the flesh to gratify its desires. This is what we need to do. And again, understand, this is not the thing we do when we get saved, but it's the thing that we need to do every single day, guys. Being prepared. Like a soldier, right? I'm sure before he went on the battlefield, does he get suited up like Rambo, right? Does he put on all that gear? Yes, he does. Does a cop, before he hits the streets, does he get suited up to make sure he has all the pieces he needs? Yes. Does a fireman, and the list goes on. Why not a Christian? God has given us these things. And again, I want to drive this home because this is our responsibility. God says, I've given you everything you need. But it's up to us every single morning. And if we fail to put it on, we fail to go to God, again, it's our fault. When we step on a landmine out there and it blows up in our face, it's our fault. Because we we tried to do it on our own. And I want you to think about that. Knowing everything that God has given us in Christ, if we walk out the door without God, what message does that send to the Lord? We are basically saying, let's be honest, I don't need you, God. I will call you when I need you. But in the meantime, I'll just kind of take it from here. And what a dangerous thing to do, guys. What a dangerous thing to do. We need to continually, again, arm ourselves with the things that God has given us. And he tells us why. He says, tells us why we need to put on the armor. Look back at verse 11. He says, put on the armor of God. Why? That you may be able to stand. Stand against the schemes, the strategies, the wiles of Satan. This is why we need it, because understand what Paul is saying. Without the armor, you are not going to be able to stand. 
The devil's going to throw everything at you guys. He's going to try everything he can to knock you out of the box. And this is our only defense. This is what we need every single day. Now, the word schemes refers to his clever, crafty methods, his deceptive strategies. I truly believe that he is planning all the time. His demons are planning all the time as they've been watching us, as they've been studying us. And they know, you know what? This one, this tool won't work. This tool won't work. This tool, oh, this one will work. And he's just waiting. He's waiting for the opportunity. He's waiting for us to give him just this much so that he can try this trap. But I love it because I truly believe as we go to the Lord, as we seek the Lord, God gives us discernment. God gives us wisdom. He opens our eyes so that we can see these things. Maybe other people wouldn't recognize. Maybe the unsaved don't recognize that it's a trap, but God illumines us. Again, it's the arm of light that allows us to see these things for what they are so that we are guarded, so that we are protected against these things. Paul tells us in 2 Corinthians 2.11, in order to overcome the enemy, the Christian cannot afford to be ignorant of his devices. We need to know the things he does. We need to know the tools he uses in order to not fall prey to his lies, to his traps, to his schemes. There's an old saying that knowing your enemy is half the battle. You guys heard that one? Knowing him, it's half the battle. So we need to know him. We need to know our enemy. And it comes by understanding who he is, where he came from, the things he knows. He's been around a long time, guys. He has caught many men, and if I can say, many men far better than me, and he's taken them out. And if he can do that to them, he can do to anybody. Anybody who, again, tries to serve the Lord on their own strength, forgetting about the things that God has given for our provision. We need to be careful, guys. We need to be wise. Now, again, he's called the devil, the accuser. Revelations 12, 7, he, his name is Satan, which means adversary. He is the enemy of us, and he's the enemy of God. He is the tempter in Matthew 4, 3, a murderer and a liar, John 8, 44, the thief in John 10, 10, who comes to steal, kill, and destroy. He's compared to a lion and a dragon. And I think that should tell us something, right? Now, if we were reading the Bible and it said that the devil is like a bunny rabbit, that would be one thing, right? But that's not what it says. He's described as a dragon, guys. A lion. Something that we need to take serious. I mean, it says something. I don't know about you, but any of you guys ever fought a dragon before? Right? How about a lion, hand to hand? No. We wouldn't mess with that. We wouldn't even get in a cage with that. And again, this should tell us something. We need to be mindful. We need to be careful. We need to pray and ask God again to open our eyes and to help us see things, to see the attacks. You know, when I do any dealings with people, you know, I want to know. I want to know what I'm getting into. That's one of the things I pray. Lord, help me. Help me. Give me discernment. Help me to understand. Should I get involved in this? Should I go there? I want to know. I don't want to put myself in a, in a vulnerable position, in a place that could be tempting or could get me in trouble. And for that reason, again, I need the Lord. I think about the enemy. And, and uh, how many of you guys like fishing? You guys like fishing, right? Awesome, fishing. Now, when you go out there and you fish, you imagine if you went to a lake for your first time. You've never been to the lake. And you take specific fishing gear out there, right? And you try to fish. And, and if you're a pretty good fisherman, pretty much doesn't matter where you are. If you, are, if you have the right tools and technique, you, you can probably catch fish. But imagine if you went to that same lake for a thousand years, how good would you come at catching fish in that lake? Pretty good? The best. The best. Think about this. The devil is a hunter, guys. He's out there. He's been using the same tools. He has the shiny lures. He has the, right? You guys can name all the different fish eggs and anchovy. He uses, he knows what to use. And he just watches us. He says, maybe this guy doesn't like anchovies, but I can get him to, on this shiny lure right here. And he knows. 
And again, we need to be wise. You and I both know the things that tempt us, right? And we need to guard ourselves. We need to keep away from those things. We can't even play with them. I'll be honest. You know, I hear guys saying that I was an alcoholic, but, you know, they don't mind, you know, hanging outside a bar or something like that. It just makes no sense. You know what will get you. We're all different. We need to keep away from it. Guys that struggle with pornography, I tell them, get rid of your cable. Seriously. It's not that hard. Just turn it off. You don't need it. Whatever it is, you know the devil's a liar. And if he can just get us to give him this much, that's it. You know, guys that say, again, struggle with alcohol. and they Well, it's nothing wrong with drinking beer casually at a party. Okay, hey, you want to you wanna fool around with something that's going to blow up in your face? Oh, that's up to you. But we need to be mindful. We need to be careful because the devil's a liar and he's been at this game for a long time. And if we underestimate him, if we think we can handle him, if we think we can outsmart him, we're only fooling ourselves. That's the bottom line. We need to be careful, guys. We need to be careful. Now, the good news is we don't have to fight him. The Bible tells us, 2 Chronicles 20, 15. Thus says the Lord to you, do not be afraid, and we don't need to be afraid of him, and do not be dismayed at this great horde, at this great enemy, for the battle is not yours, but God's. And I love that. I love that old saying that when Satan comes knocking at your door, you just have to ask the Lord to get the door for you. And that's it. You let him do it. You don't have to deal with that. You don't have to battle one-on-one. You allow the Lord because how many of you know Satan is no match for the Lord? No, no match at all. So you allow the Lord to take care of that for you. God is all-knowing, right? He's omniscient. He's all-powerful, omnipotent. Right? He's uh, omnipresent, which means God is everywhere at once, but Satan is none of these things. He is no match for God, so we don't need to be afraid. We don't need to be worried. Now, the interesting thing about this is, if Satan can only be at one place, how does he wreak so much havoc throughout the world? Right? How does he accomplish all that he does? And that's what Paul addresses next. Look back at your text in verse 12. He says, For we do not wrestle, we... Everybody, all Christians, we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the cosmic powers over this present darkness, against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly places. Now, I love this because he tells us here that we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but we wrestle against spiritual things. And what that says is that we are all wrestlers. You guys get that? We're all wrestlers, all of us. Right now, the UFC and all that kind of stuff is big with, you know, all that kind of thing. But we've been wrestlers forever, literally. The question is, do we get tapped out? That's the question, right? Do we say uncle to the enemy? Does he get us like this all the time in a chicken wing? Or do, are we able to stand? Are we able, again, to keep this from happening? The word wrestling in in the dictionary is defined as a physical competition between two competitors who attempt to gain and maintain superior position. I like this. Two opponents that are fighting each other, just trying to gain higher ground. And this is exactly what's taking place. Higher ground. The enemy is trying to get on top of us. He's trying to get, take us down and have something over us. But it's a battle, a constant battle that takes place. And it's fierce. And there's sweat and there's blood and there's tears and it's all those things. Because it is a battle. But this battle, again, is not physical. And for that reason, in order to beat a, phys- a spiritual enemy, what do we need? We need spiritual power, which comes from God, which can only come from God. Now, the Apostle Paul tells us here that we wrestle against rulers, against authorities, against cosmic powers, against spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly places. Now, I don't know exactly what that means, I've tried to do a lot of research, I've done a lot of research, trying to figure out, are all these different types of demons? Some uh, Bible scholars say that they're levels of demons. I don't know. You guys can look that up and decide. But this is what I got out of it. Regardless of what they are, 
they're organized. And they have, they're on a mission. They're on a mission to take us out. And we need to be careful, guys. We need to be on guard. And this is why Paul says in verse 13, Therefore, right, understanding what you're up against, understanding that there are groups of demons after you, you need to take up the whole armor of God. Why? That you may be able to withstand, withstand in the evil day and having done all to stand firm. The Bible says that the enemy launches his fiery darts. He throws all kinds of stuff at us. And the only way that we can withstand the things that he is sending our way is to have that full armor of God. Now the beautiful thing is as Christians, we are able to stand against the enemy. But when you look out in the world and you see so many people defeated and you see so many people in bondage, you see so many people addicted, you know why they're in that, that predicament? Because they have nothing to keep them from falling. They have no armor. They have no protection. But we don't have to be in addiction. We don't have to be in bondage. We don't have to be in any of these things because God has given us provision that allows us not to have to be tapped out not to have to surrender. And again, we need to take advantage of this. We need to arm ourselves every single day. 1 John 4, 4 says, Little children, you are from God and have overcome them, for he who is in you is what? Greater than he that is in the world. This is the comfort we have. We don't have to fear the enemy because God is with us. But Paul tells us we're to withstand in the evil day. And let me ask you, is the day we're living in evil? Oh, yes, it is. It is an evil day. Just look around. Watch the news. It is an evil day, and I truly believe Satan is pulling out all the stops, doing all he can, taking pastors out, closing churches down. He's doing everything he can because he knows his time is running short, guys. He's after us. And I expect the battle to only get worse. And I preach this message, I share this because, because he's taking people out. He's taking more brothers out. There were many brothers, even more than my best friend who I started with, who I started serving the Lord with, that are backslidden, that are back out in the world. And I wonder what happened. This is what happened. They failed to involve God in their life. They failed to rely on God's spirit every single day. Now, I told you that we don't have to fight the enemy. But what Paul tells us to do is that we would stand firm. You guys see that? Stand. Just stand today. You don't have to go after him. You don't have to go binding the devil. You just stand. God, as God has saved you, as God has done a work in your life, as God continues to grow you, All God desires you to do is to put that armor on and stand. Now this word stand, to stand firm, is a military term that refers to holding your position. You guys with me? Hold your position. Whatever God has given you, how far God has brought you in your Christianity, in your Christian walk, that's yours. And God expects you, God demands that you hold your position. Again, you don't have to advance against the enemy. You don't have to attack the enemy. You just stand where you are. Now, as I think about this, I'm reminded of one of my favorite movies. How many of you guys have seen Braveheart? We've seen Braveheart? We've got some Braveheart fans out there, right? Beautiful movie. And I love this because it's a scene in one of the first battles that they have. And you guys might remember this. They're up against the English, and the English have all the horses that are going to be charging. They have like a few horses. And they know there's no way they can defeat this charging army. But what does William Wallace tell them? As the horses are charging after him, he says, hold. Remember that? He says, hold, hold. And he starts getting louder. And he's telling them, hold, hold. They were outnumbered. But what he did not want his men to do was to retreat. Just hold. Just hang on. And I love that. I think this is a valuable lesson. Because in every room, with every man that I talk to, every man that I share this with, every man in the the place will fall into three categories, guys. Three categories. I want you to ask yourself this morning which category you fall into. There are some that are gaining ground. They continue to grow. They continue to seek the Lord. They are pressing in. And God is 
advancing them and giving them more ground. Maybe more of their family members are coming to faith. More of their friends are coming to faith. And they are making impact in the kingdom of God. They're gaining ground. Maybe that's you. I hope that's you. There are those that maybe they're not there yet, but they're still holding their ground. They're, staying, they're being faithful to God. They might be struggling. There's ups and downs as we all have them, but they're still holding their ground. And I hope that's you. But the last category are those men that are losing ground. They're losing ground because they're no longer pressing in. They're slacking off. They allowed relaxation, being too, being too casual to be a part of their life. And because they're no longer pressing in, Satan is taking ground from them. No longer are they moving forward. No longer are they where they used to be. And again, it's a sad thing. This is not the will of God. Again, God wants to do something with every man here. I'll say it again. I never thought I would be a pastor. I never even wanted to be a pastor, to be honest with you. But you know what? Being able to stand and share with other men, with other people, all that God has done, God's a good God. And what a privilege it is to serve the Lord. Whatever, whatever that may be, it's a privilege. What I don't want to do is lose what God has given me. And so what do I need to do? I need to press in. I need to be mindful of the devil's strategies. I need to understand that I'm in a battle, a spiritual battle every day. I can't live like I'm living in a playground. I have to remember that I'm in a battleground. And so every single day I've got to seek the Lord. I have to spend time with God. I've got to ask him to fill me with his presence, protect me with his angels, right? Uh, cover me with the armor that he was given me so that I do not become a casualty, so that I do not lose the ground that God has given me. I've seen the Lord bless the lives of so many men. Okay? Again, I'm coming up on 24 years now serving the Lord. I actually just passed 24 years last month. 24 years serving the Lord. I've seen God deliver men from addictions. I've seen him bring their wives back. I've seen him bring their kids back. I've seen him give them good jobs. But then I've seen them grow lazy. And I've seen them lose all the ground that God had given them and eventually become a casualty. I pray this morning as I'm closing that your Christianity would not be on cruise control, guys. Know that God wants to do something special here. Know that God wants to do something special with you. The Bible says in Genesis 4, 7, this is a scary verse, but I'm always reminded of this. He says this, he says, sin lies at the door and its desire is for you. You guys heard that scripture? Genesis 4, 7, sin lies at the door and its desire is for you. It wants to rob you. It wants to put you in bondage. It wants to bring you back into addiction. And if we're not careful, if we're not mindful again, we will not only become a casualty, but worst of all, we will lose out on all that God has for us. I pray again that would not be any of us this morning. Amen? Amen. Let's pray, guys. Father, we love you, Lord, and, and thank you this morning, Lord, for your word. It's your word, it's your truth, Father, that you give us, Lord God, that provides instruction to our lives, Father. I pray for every man in this place, Father. I pray that you would challenge us this morning by your word. Father, allow your Holy Spirit to speak to us, Lord, and to to convict us and to challenge us, Lord, to press in. Open our eyes and our hearts, Father. Help us, Father, with greater discernment to see the sign of the times, to see things that are taking place, Lord. Not only in this world, Lord God, but even around us, Lord, around this church and within this church. Help us, Father, to to stand up. Help us to be men, Father, and to stand firm. To seek you more than we ever have before, Lord. Spending time with you in prayer and in your word. Father, being faithful to your things, Lord God, in this house. Supporting our pastor, Lord God. Unto you. Help us, Father. You have a role, Father. I believe you're going to continue to to work in and through this church, Father, expanding their territory, Lord God, being with them and blessing them. And I pray and I know that you will do that, Lord, through the men in this church, Lord. Use them. Help them. Strengthen them. Be glorified in and through them, Father, as we love you and we thank you this morning. In Jesus' name, amen.
Amen. God bless you guys.